This is our Lofori of Hashtag The African Dream. We're here with Joseph Ampedu. Joseph Ampedu is going on a solo drive across the world. Five continents, one driver, one car. And right now our location is Washington DC in the United States. Um, his trip has brought him to North America and we decided to have a chat with him so he tells us about his adventure. It's winter, February 2024. Yeah, Joseph. Tell us, what inspired you to embark on this journey? I believe that nomadic is, is really part of our genes. Right. Because when human were discovered around the world, the African continent is basically where life was, I mean, properly evolved. Right. Because our body temperature, the, the temperature that is, I mean, common on the African continent, it means that that is where we actually evolved. Mm. So if life was actually found in all parts of the planet, it means that nomadic had already been, I mean, it, I mean, engineered into our genes. Right. So I find it necessary that I mean somehow it's there's some kind of underlying happiness when I mean I drive around to see things. You joined a team yes. where you drove from Accra, Ghana, in Africa to London in the United Kingdom, yes. and this was in August 2023. Tell us about the people you traveled with. I had a, a team where 13 in number mm. and we were all kind of uh, strangers to each other because right. we were not actually friends. We came together as in trying to I mean, achieve that kind of adventure goal. Right. So basically it was for that and then after we finished the trip, I mean we all had our different plans and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that, that was it but I mean they were, were kind of interesting because I mean each person brought different Kind of board all right. together and then right. we were um, kind of trying to understand each other from different angles but we actually had a nice time and it was it was really a, a successful journey let me let me go a bit details in what, what, what actually transpired right so while we were on the journey mm. uh, we got to a point whereby some of us have kind of divided decision right in a sense that uh, some of us were not comfortable maintaining certain kind of behavior on the road so they left me and one of my my friends right so we were five cars three of us left us on the highway and we never saw, saw them again okay so my solo driving started from Morocco because we were in a group but since they left us on the highway right i started driving alone from the northern part of morocco right when i started driving alone mm. then i realized that for oh, driving alone would give myself the necessary time to experience certain things that I wouldn't be able to experience right. if, I'm, if I'm with a group. Right, right, right. So then I started enjoying that solo driving. Mm, mm, and then mm. so I entered Europe alone and then I did the entire Europe tour alone. I went all the way to Austria okay. where this car was manufactured. Okay. And I had very nice experience. Okay. So from there, it's like that basic Einstein uh, <laughs> concept whereby he said an event, follow an event can utter the next event. Right. This is about natural events. <laughs> right. So the first event was the the division, and the second event was the solo drive, that which has predisposed me to love mm. more solo drive. Mm, mm, mm. And I think I'm becoming addicted to it. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting. Yes. So you you split based on just ideological differences, yes. and there was nothing really to create a rift between you. It was mm -hmm. just purely ideological I mean, differences. Yes, exactly. That's that's interesting. Now I know you are also doing some advocacy as part of this. Um, solo drive um tell us what you're advocating for um and and why uh, you're doing that yeah so i have had uh, this in mind that um we are getting older we're going to exit this planet very soon mm. and our children are going to be the next adults right so what can we do for them to i mean to be responsible i mean towards the planet right so i feel that science is one of the basic principles that I mean can make I mean people come together to live without even most much issues. Mm -hmm. So I try as much as possible to influence the younger kids to love science, right? Which will also help them to be I mean uh, uh, to face some of the challenges right. that they, they, they will have in life. So and, and aside that, I also have in mind that oh, I mean child abuse is something that can go on without even detection mm. because even when it comes to uh, I mean emotional abuse 
uh, psychological abuse, it's difficult to even de detect it. Right. So I, I just also have in mind that uh, why can't I also influence parents to show unconditional love to their kids and also to to minimize or to prevent child abuse. Right. And then the, the mental health issue also came in that. Mm. Let me also, I mean, push the mental health agenda because it's something that. I mean, I mean, success has a big connection to do with our, with our brains, right? You know, and then how we can, I mean, live with the adaptive, I mean, I mean, culture, right? That we we can all come together to live on this planet without any issues. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Now, um, tell us about uh, some of the things you have on this vehicle helping you on this solo drive. When I set off from Ghana. Uh, there are some few things that I did to the car. Mm. The so first this, thing this was, is a customized car. Yes. Okay. I, I, I did a bit of customization. Right. The first thing was to change the tires. Okay. Because on a highway with unknown road conditions, you don't want a situation whereby you can you hit a a, a pothole. So you within where we can. I mean, America is fine. But there, there are photos in America. Oh, oh yes, there are no, photos, not regularly, but, but not yeah. the ones that can cut <laughs> right. your, your your tide. Your right. can cut your tide. Right, right, right. So, but the the other portals that I I have I have known. I mean, sometimes when you when you hit a certain speed, your rim can cut the tide and you lose the air in mm. the middle of the night or right. on the highway. I don't want. I didn't want to encounter that. Right. So the first thing was to increase the 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 height of my ties mm. to make it more balloon. So that in case I hit a pothole, right. the rim doesn't get to the tire. Right. You know to suspend it more. Right. So actually raise the car up to a little bit. You have to have a more uh, ground clearance at the at the, at the down. Got you. Which which has really done a, a bit. Uh, I mean, better for me because I also realized that even with a tire, mm. like Einstein will give you the the energy and mass is equal. I mean, how to equate energy and mass? The bigger the tire, the heavier it is, and then the, the, the better the mass. Right compared to the smaller tires right so this tire has been more aggressive on the highway which i've never had any issue i don't even get my tire going down with the air, air, air pressure interesting which i have really 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 loved it <laughs> yeah, and these are michelin tires that i got from ghana good you know, good uh, tell us about the water we're, we're looking at in the video right now yes is it so, water that is clean to drink or just water for emergency purposes yes yeah, so so i searched i searched the tire these are the tires what i did in ghana but mm. When I moved towards um, this part of the world, then I realized that oh, the, 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 the way I have been using the car, I need I needed some more other stuff. So, right. so when I get stuck in the snow, this this very device, if I get stuck in a stuck in the snow, this is what I'm going to use under the tie. This red devices, right, for me to get traction, right. So it's it's, me it's purposely meant for that. Okay. And these okay. are these are a bit custom custom made roof rack. You can see that I have all this like. And then I've done it in such a way that it's not easy. You can see that I've actually sealed the edges of here. It's for security for anti theft. Right. So, so you no you one can put. You can't have Alan King going there. Because, right. You know. So these are all things that I've done today. Because in some cases, you know. And then this one, too, I did a reverse mounting of this spare tire. If I remove the cover, you realize that the rim, the the face of the rim is here. Right. I change it in 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 Los. Uh, in Las Vegas, okay. I bought a device that made the tide reverse at the back of the of the, of the mm. and it takes a bigger tide than the, the standard general gun spare tide. Gotcha. The standard one is the one up there. This gotcha. one is bigger, and this one. So the general gun, the spare tide, they did it in such a way that the rim is smaller, but the tide is, is is high. Okay. To match the standard. So what I have here is. It's the same rim as this. It's not a small rim. Right. This very one. It's purposely for my adventure. Huh. And the tie is the same thing that uh, I mean matches this standard. So in case I have emergency, when I bring this tie, I'm changing it and I'm moving. Right. I put in this roof rack. So right. you can see that there's a rack on top. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I had to get extra four tanks because I'll be going to Alaska. So those red gallons you see, right. they are extra, extra fuel tanks. Okay. And then, apart from the extra fuel tanks, I needed water. Mm. That in case maybe an emergency, I need water. Right. So the, the water tank is a, is a, is a great uh, colored uh, 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 I mean, gallon. Right. And even talking about that, going to Alaska, I understand that the gravitational pull is different. Mm -hmm. 
I, I went to the Death Valley, you know the Death Valley in, in the California. Okay. It's a, okay. It has the strongest gravitational pull in North America. Right. I was there <laughs> and I drove to experience the Death Valley. If, even though it was so subliminal, I couldn't detect. Right. But I knew I was there. Right. And I, it has the strongest gravitational pull. Because That's it's about 85 meters below sea level. Right. And right. then my plan is to go to Alaska. Since Alaska has a slower rotational speed. Right. It will predispose me to have a, also a stronger gravitational pull. That's interesting. And then of course I'll burn more fuel. Right. Because the weight of my car will go up. Right. So you are, you are applying a lot more of force, force. To, to, to I mean to get a traction on the road. Interesting. Like, like they will say that you can never set yourself in motion without pushing or burning something. Right. <laughs> you know. No, no, no. I see. I see this um, food warmer. Yes. Uh, t tell us about these uh, gadgets in your car. Yes. Uh, There's a microwave. It's like. A, it runs on 12 volts. So if I want to warm food, I can use this one. Right. And this is a fridge. So this one, I can connect to my phone too. So that's the inside. This is a fridge. And it runs on 12 volts. Nice. Yeah. And then, up there, the roof rack. And this one also runs on 12 volts. This one too is a, is a, is a, is like a, a microwave. Warmer. Yeah. But it hits, it hits the food very, right. very, very very effectively. <laughs> Good. Yes. We're preparing to get on the road as you can see and um, enjoy the adventure. Now you, you mentioned about the gravitational pull in the Death Valley, uh, California yes. and you're heading towards Canada to experience something similar that yeah. would, you know, uh, require you to use more more force to gain traction to move beyond the uh, gravitational pull. Yes. I, I hope I'm not sounding like Einstein. <laughs> oh no, no no no, it's okay. I mean, science but, science is but, the, science is the only thing that uh, I mean confirm the lies. You know. <laughs> True. I like that. Yes. <laughs> tell us, tell us about some of the memorable experiences you've had, um, or some of the uh, interesting questions you've been asked besides the ones I'm asking you now. <laughs> oh, oh yes, so um, if I if I look at the questions as in on the, my my interaction with some of especially the gas stations Right when I stop because with the gas station you meet people right. who don't live in, even in the community They are all like they're on the road. <laughs> that is where sometimes I get some of the questions Interesting. So, so one question that I couldn't answer mm. was how did you get a car? You look at me and say, how did you get a car? <laughs> I was like, I did was you like, buy it? No, if I say if I say I bought it, it would be like everybody knows that you have to buy a car. Right. So it'd be like I, I, I didn't want to make him feel offended. Right. So I was like, I couldn't answer. Then he repeated it. I said, no, but you know that a car has to be bought. Right. <laughs> so I still look at him and I smile. Then right. he changed the person that so he said, Where would you end your trip? Right. And I said, Ghana. I said, okay. Uh, this this brings me to my next question. You have a peculiar number plate yes. for people who are outside of Ghana. Yeah. It's a Ghana number plate. So yes. when you're in Ghana, it's a normal plate. Yes. But once you're outside of the country, even in other parts of the uh, African continent and even beyond Africa, in Europe and in the Americas, yes. people are fascinated by your number plate. Yes. Tell us some of the interesting stories uh, you've, you've uh, had based on people seeing your number plate. Okay, so what I've observed, there are two sides of it. Mm -hmm. One is the Ghanaians, and then one are the foreigners, and one is the police. Right. So, with the Ghanaians, one of the interesting moments to my consciousness was in New York when a taxi driver stopped in the middle of the traffic. Mm -hmm. He came down with his phone to walk in front and take a photo of me. Then said, Hey, hey, Ghana number, and I walk out on Like in the industry, he said, Hey, is, that's the Ghana's number. Then he, he came to take a phone when the traffic light was green, people were blowing horn. Right. He didn't even pay attention. Shout out to New York taxi drivers who yes. are from Ghana in Africa. <laughs> yeah. He came to take a photo and I was like, wow, that's that that, that is love. And apart that, from that, is that interesting. Apart from that, some of the Ghanaians, when I visit them mm -hmm. and they see the car, sometimes I can observe the emotional connection right. between especially those who have been here for a long time. Right, right. You could see how quiet they become. And then, like, there's there's some kind of connection between right. them and Ghana. And there's, there's a when, lot of positive energy. I remember exactly. I saw you at the embassy of Ghana in Washington DC. Yeah. The embassy staff came just to surround your car, show you some love, 
have a connection between you and your car, your journey and your experience and your advocacy. And of course, the number plate was a, a major draw, you know? Yes. So. <laughs> yes. And then aside that, um, I would say that, um, okay, so talking about the, the police. Mm. So one day I was pulled over by the police in, 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 in Florida. Okay. Florida in around, the United around States. 8 PM, okay. eight, around 8 p.m. Around 8, 8.30 p.m. Okay. So I was driving and then um, I asked the police, so, so I saw a light flashing, mm, like mm, there's mm. those blue lights flashing, right. just, just, and I said, okay, that, that, that's the police, let me stop. Right. So I stopped and I, I pulled my head out, I know that you, you, you're not supposed to get down, right. the police are supposed to walk to you. Right. So I just rolled my glass down and pulled my head out, I said, hi officer, then he said, um, and, I, and then, then, then I, I asked him that, I asked him questions that I've been, I've been driving on, uh, this is my 25th state, I'm a tourist. Okay. No police officer has, has stopped me apart from you. <laughs> so why, what made you stop Right. Me? Then he was like, I saw a number plate, I've never seen it, this number plate in my life. I want to figure out what it is. <laughs> Guys, remember this number plate. <laughs> when you see it in Ghana, when he's back or yes. anywhere in the world, the owner is Joseph Ampedu. Yes. He is doing a solo drive across the world, five continents, one car, one driver. Check him out online, two spare tires, and um, continue your story. Yes. So the officer was like, I, wanna, I wanted to figure out what, it, what is that? Mm. And I said, oh, okay, officer, I'm a, I'm a tourist. I'm from Ghana. So this is my car right. from Ghana that I want to drive it here to tour around. And I say, show me a document that shows that you brought this car. You actually brought this car from your country. <laughs> and then, so the, the first thing I asked is, how did you do that? How did you bring your car from Ghana here? Right. That's a and good say, question. Can you show me a document that shows that you brought this car from Ghana? Right. I said, yeah, so the document is right here. So I, I did like this. I pull it up in a file and I give it to him. Right. I say, can I see your ID, your driver's license? I said, okay. So that one is right here. Right. Because I have arranged things around me that I don't need to go too far. Right. Easy and access. And I put that license. So I put the international one first. Mm. And I told him that it's, it's accompanied by the local one in Ghana. Right. And I added it. He looked at me and said, okay, carry on, enjoy your talk. Mm. I said, okay, <laughs> thank you, Mr. Police Officer. <laughs> so uh, that was it. But I mean, aside that, um, like I said, some of the Ghanaians, I mean, it's been like a, a positive right. reinforcement mm. to confirm that um, we have good connection with this country, right. the United States. Yeah, US Ghana relations. Yes. Now, um, if someone is watching this right now and they are inspired to want to go on a solo drive, um, you obviously are embarking on one. You finished uh, one before already. What are some of the few tips that you would have for them to prepare them? And um, how did you personally prepare yourself mentally and psychologically for this? So this is a twofold question. Yes. So first of all, I would say that in terms of your vehicle or your car, you have to make sure that the car is in good condition. Mm. That's number one. And aside that, uh, you need to be prepared for anything. As I say, prepare for anything. Anything at all can happen. Right. Now, I mean, in case like anything happen, you must have a contingency plan. Mm -hmm. So, I think that the, the, the wind pressure is a little high. Right. Maybe, uh, maybe let me close the vents. So, that, <laughs> so you, you must be ready to face anything in case of anything that, that actually happens. Right. So those are some of the because your car can break down in the middle. of highway right. depend on which country you find yourself you must be able to um, make sure that there are proper plans to, 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 to take care of all those kind of uh, I mean on unexpected emergencies so there's a financial aspect to yes things like this that you must yes. uh, consider and prepare a, for a, exactly how did you psychologically prepare yourself for this because this could be stressful you're, you're just driving the road is your office the car is your home and your mind is your only friend oh yes 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 so like i said anything that is part of our genetics if you if you 
albeit it, it might not be a mentally challenging behavior. Right. As far as it's part of our genes. Right. You know? So it's, it's a state of mind. You can win yes. in your mind. Yes. So as far as nomadic has been part of our genetic coding. Right. If you pay attention, because see, if why is it that we can arrest a person, mm. put a person in prison, feed the person, mm. provide everything for the person, but yes, it's the punishment to extinguish the behavior. Right. Because we stop you from getting, I mean, your, your brain, your, your eyes seeing things, your freedom is seized, and then you are being disconnected from your, from your, from your I mean, social uh, uh, connections. Right. It becomes a punishment. Right. So I feel that as far as you have a means to move about for your, your, your senses to keep detecting things, mm -hmm. it becomes not mentally challenging. That's what I've noticed so far. Interesting. And then, aside that, the other thing is it can be boring. So the the, the other thing I've noticed is that when it comes to, let's say, in terms of how boring it could be, especially when I'm on, um, I am on, on an interstate highway, mm. I don't like it right. that much. Right. Because most of the interstate highway, it's a straight big road. Right. You don't turn your steering wheel. And you just go straight and when you become a bit slow in your activity it, it, it can be a bit boring and if right. you don't take it you may even fall asleep right so <laughs> i don't really enjoy most of the interstate highway because it requires a lot of alertness yes so <laughs> i like the road that are a bit small crooked right winding roads the yes, exactly <laughs> those ones when i get them i don't I don't become bored at all, and then I'll tell myself, I tell realize that came. I need to pay attention, you know. It's, That's it's, interesting. It's, it's, now, it's um, very nice. Have, have you driven in Germany? Yes, I did. Uh, okay, so I did. I actually did in Austria. Okay, Austria. Okay. Yeah, I did. I did. I did driving in Austria. Okay. Well, I I asked because I want to make a comparison, the highways in uh, America and the highways in Europe. Yes. Which is your favorite and why? Oh, my my favorite is southern part of France. Okay. <laughs> and in fact, I was thinking that. I'll, I'll get something similar to the southern part of France in America. Okay. But I'll say that I haven't done everything in America so far. Right. How many states have you done so far? Uh, I'm on my 30th state. By the time I get to New York, I would have completed 32 states. Interesting. Um, tell us a little bit about where you were born. Oh, okay. So, um, I am I am from Quill. Okay. Someone will say a proper coma, yes. But I was born in Ashanti region. Okay. A, a, a small town called Juasu. Ashanti Achim Juasu. Okay. Yeah, so that was where I was born. And then uh, someone will say a great man are not born in a city. <laughs> I know, right? I'm not a great man, actually. Yeah, a greater man. He's right. He's not a great man. He's a greater man. He's working to becoming the greatest. So <laughs> I'm learning from him. So I was born. I mean, I was not born in a city, right? But I try, I try to do my best, as in, as in growing up, and then be more responsible towards my behavior. Mm. I try not to take advantage of people. I try right. not to be resentful on anything. I try to engage in conversation with people, right? And I try uh, not to be, I mean, deviant in my behavior, and I try not to, um, let's say, walk away with resentment instead of talking and discussing the way forward. Good. Yeah. Good. So Good. the type that I had to get angry. Yeah. And then like I said, this thing I'm doing is a ability to adapt to change. Sure. Shows how intelligent you are. True. If True. you can't mingle with people and if let's say you can't control your behavior and be respectful, you can't do what I'm doing. Mm, because yeah. you you find yourself in a situation whereby the police will frustrate you and then you right. even stop right. the, the journey. Right. Because if you don't respect the law the police will they will chase you right you know? <laughs> <laughs> one date on, on a highway mm. just when i was coming to this thing i saw someone a car ahead of me caught fire right there he parked mm. and then so over there i witnessed a lot of bystanders right you pass, you pass, right. You pass, you're seeing life in like yeah, real exactly. time <laughs> so that one tells me that in case i get i get into trouble on the highway right you hardly get people to stop for you yeah, exactly forget it they don't stop <laughs> so that i stop and i told right. myself that back home where i'm coming from mm. when we see things like this we stop right so right. i stop i spoke to the people and then they, they had called the ambulance Oh, but frankly speaking, within a short while, right. uh, two ambulances came, came, came on the middle of the highway, right. not in the city. <laughs> two ambulances came. 
before the fire got from them, before the fire could finish the engine, they extinguished it. Wow. And apart from that, the fire was burning the engine. It also started with the bush, with the with the bush. So right. if the fire had not come, it could have escalated. Have just, yeah, yeah, moving into the nearby bushes and stuff, and they wow. extinguished everything. Um, um, this has been a very interesting conversation, um, folks. My name is Oral Ufuri. You're watching hashtag The African Dream. This is our 90th episode, and we had for our very special guest. Joseph Ampedu. He is on a solo drive across the world and he's traversing five continents in his one car Mercedes Benz G Wagon. And um, we caught up with him here in the United States in the Washington DC metro area to share and show him some love and experience some of the things that he's been through as he answers some of our questions. Now, um, before we leave you, I think we need to stop for gas. But um, before we stop for gas, tell us on the entire experience so far, I know it's not ended yet, but what, what is the one thing that you've seen in your travels that you would want to see in Africa or in your um, country of birth, Ghana, and why? Oh, okay. So, uh, when it comes to the good road, that one, I've seen some in Africa as well. Mm. Because Senegal, they, they have very good roads. Right. Yeah, but when it comes to the behavior on the road, I think that overall, I give credit to the, to, 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 to how some, some people drive in America. In some states, they drive very, very well. And then, even on an interstate highway, I always say that you can never enter from a perpendicular angle. You have to go on a, on a sideway. Sometimes when you go on a sideway, those those on that lane will go inside for you mm. just for you to enter which is a very good behavior you know so these are all like some little little behavior that i have i have noticed and aside that too i think that over here people are disciplined in terms of respecting them like road traffic okay. regulations because you'll never even if sometimes you have a, a heavy traffic jam you never see anybody i mean driving on the shoulders of the road right you know? so these are all sana. so sometimes the, the, the behavior, the people themselves, I mean, are a lot to, they, 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 they are, what I'm trying to say is, the, the behavior of the people has a lot to do with the development of the country, right. like that. Then of course, and these are the behavior of the people, it's not like, someone will say the government is not, government is not, but these are behavior, these are, right. and we have to be responsible for our, I mean, towards our behavior. Mm, mm, so mm. I, I think that some of these things, if we yeah, are looked at, we'll get there yeah thank you once again for sharing um guys if you're watching find him on social media as two spare tires and um engage with him support him in any way that you can share this video with your friends and remember he's not doing this for himself he's also doing it as part of advocacy which he talked about in the beginning of the interview thanks for watching and um Joseph Ampedu, is yes. there anyone you want to send a shout out to who has been of um, support in any way towards this journey of yours? Oh yes, so I'll say that all my good friends that have uh, supported me and then uh, those following me, the, the, the good comments that they, they write on my platforms, they are encouraging and then um, everyone over here in America, all the good people that's been around me. I want to say hi to you, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good evening, and then thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Pleasure, pleasure. Yeah. All right, let's go get gas. <laughs> I hope.